So, Doug, one of the things I think about today, you know, we've seen what you've said about the events at Fallujah that led to this award and kind of your thoughts at that time. You've had a lot more life experience now, you know, you've, you've been in politics, you've had your family, you've had your radio show, I mean, you just have lived life. Has that changed the context for you, yeah. looking back, how's that changed? Yeah, if this would have happened uh, when I came home from the Army, you know, I don't think I would have been emotionally prepared. Uh, my family, um, I, yeah, I, and I look at a lot of, you know, some of these guys that are receiving this for Afghanistan, these are young, young people. I mean, it's a tremendous burden. Um, I think I am blessed that it took 15 years. Absolutely. I think that's a blessing. I think, I think the Army has actually gotten better at how to prepare people for it as well. Uh, before there were two wars and before we really thought that this was even a possibility. I mean, if September 11th changed everything, but I don't think the Army had the folks that you see now. I mean, there's literally professionals that do this and they prepare you for it and they help you really, I mean, they're not just public relations people, they're psychotherapists. I mean, they're just saying this is how you deal with it and this is, this is who you need to talk to. And um, I wasn't I would not have been prepared. The Army wasn't prepared, and I wouldn't have been prepared. Do you reflect on those moments that day any differently than you did, you know, back at that time? You know, I never saw the enemy as people, you know? I think, I think now when, I have, when you have children, you think, you know, obviously you want your guys, America, the good guys, to be okay. But I also now think back to, I don't want, I don't want the enemy's children t to take the road that their dad took. I don't want my kids to be fighting in, you know, conflicts with another generation. I'm, I'm hoping that, um, you know, I, I think of it more as a, what, what are the things that we can do, especially when it comes to, you know, acknowledging that. A lot of people think that war guys, veteran guys, are pro-war, that we love this. You know, we're, we're pretty anti-war. I mean, I don't know of any veteran that you've talked to that is like, this is the greatest thing in the world. We're violently anti-war. But we, the goal, the end state, is that we don't have to do this anymore. I mean, if you would have told me that I would join the Army because my son and daughters would also get to have this experience, I never would have done it. It's not worth it. You fight so that it stops here and it doesn't continue. And it would be heartbreaking to know that this is going to go on for another 25 years. Well, we potentially have men and women serving now who are the sons and daughters. So. It's, yeah. I mean, and, and at the same time, I think that, um, I, I think about it. I never thought about it. I, you know what I'm saying? You're asking me, like, where am I now as a 40-year-old man as middle age as compared to that never even crossed my mind it was the enemy's over here let's go get them um I, that's what you think about you think about you know there's a real human toll here there's a real human cost and people are volunteering to do it every day and it speaks volumes one of the things i was thinking about the last couple of days is you know when we first talked about this i congratulated you and got some congratulations here and that's and you, you kind of touched on this a little bit that's a, kind of a celebratory sort of thing, but you know, the events that lead to a Medal of Honor are serious business. I mean, it's life and death situations, and there's people on both sides that are involved. And you mentioned, you know, you didn't see the enemy's people at that time. Even though I'm a veteran, I never served in war. What would you say to those of us that have never been in war? How do you really view the Medal of Honor? You know, I, I, I reflexively, um, stepping away from I don't know because I don't I've, you know I haven't had any real responsibility with it and I don't really have it so I can't really I don't know I have no idea I could tell you the guys that I've watched go through this and you know really studied what they're saying and how they're saying they always came across as awkward they didn't have media training they didn't look like they were well re prepared and now I realize 
it's that they had it's just so awkward that you just come across that way it's you could have all the training in the world you could be you know uh, have your own cable news show and the award is just so overwhelming that it makes you just a, a stuttering fool because you don't know you, you can't what are you supposed to say like yes i'm worthy no one's worthy especially people that are alive you know like i don't i don't see how anyone could say that sober that they're what they did was worthy of of something this important but um i, I you know i look at veterans you know everyone talks about what happens when you kick down a door and there's a guy on the other side of the door but how many thousands of people tens of thousands have kicked down doors and nothing's on the other side does that mean that they're not ready for someone that's there i mean you're willing to do it you know exactly what could happen and you do it anyway that to me is as cool as the guy who actually reacts because you're willing to do it you know politics what's your future uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. Uh, if I'm asked to do something by, you know, uh, a people, I will think about it. But honestly, here's the thing. I didn't run for elected office because I felt entitled to or that I was bored or this is, you know, I've done two years in the Albany. I, I want to graduate up. It really was never my intent. I tried to never come across to someone that was just, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm entitled in 2012, all these things that we're talking about now, they happened in 2004. So I had those under my belt, and the people felt it wasn't good enough, right? Just because you have an award now doesn't mean that you put it on the table and cash it in for for something. If if if, uh, if this wasn't worthy in 2012, it, it, why should it be worthy in 2019? What, what difference does... The highest award, the second highest award, the third highest award. What does that make you better qualified to do? Um, if if I feel if the the people are like this is the best way to serve your community, I'll do it. If running for school board is the best way to serve my community, I'll do it. But if running around and talking to veterans and helping people is the best way to serve my country, I'll do that too. You still think about twenty twenty? I don't. I I don't know if the army tells me I got to do this for a year and a half, two years. I mean, what kind of craven human would decide to run for, you know, you got a campaign if you're going to do that full time. And I just, I, I don't know what the Army has in store for me, so I really can't so, so say. So there'll be duties that go with this. Yeah, I don't, I would not bet that I would be a guy that is going to, you know, I, I just don't think it's, and I don't think the timetable and the calendar work out.